welcome, welcome back. We've made it through the winter. I'm here, you guys are here, so that means it's time to get working on this S2170 again. So in the previous episodes, I forget how many we've done now, we've done some serious work to it, we've done all the back and we've done a lot of other stuff as well. Now it's time to get working on the internals of this engine. So this is quite an in-depth one, hope you enjoy it. This is what's coming up. Right, you f let's get you back on. Time to recondition the oil separator. So these do look quite bad because it gets scorched by the manifold, but this I can wire wheel off and then we're gonna use some high temperature paint that basically goes directly onto metal. And that should make that look a bit better. This little gasket on here needs to be changed because that does get affected by the heat, so that'll be done as well. And then we've got the gasket on the back too that will be changed. Also, because of the job these do, they do kind of get full of uh, oil or sludge or whatever. I can hear quite a bit in here. So what I'm gonna do is run some white spirit through it and keep pouring it out until it runs clear. Yeah, see that's baked in there, that does need changing, so we'll take this out. Put some white spirit in. So I'm just gonna keep rinsing this through until it comes out a bit clearer, and then I'll leave it to evaporate somewhere. That's what came out. This is what we're getting out now. Wrap the end up with tape. Clean it up with a wire wheel. So I can see the proper Ford marking coming back there. Okay, there we go, clean it up as best you can. It hasn't got to be perfect, so all this pitting, we won't be able to get rid of that, but it is smoothed off as much as we can there, and we can see the part numbers and the make there as well. So it's quite important with these, they don't have any holes in whatsoever, because if you've got a hole, you'll have like a vacuum leak and then you get misfire. So had a good look around it, all the seams are absolutely fine, no holes, no leaks. So what I'm gonna do now is give it another clean with uh, brake cleaner, and then we're gonna put some high temperature paint on it. Three coats of high temperature paint, five minutes apart. That's three coats on there now. I'm just gonna let this dry off for half an hour. Then I'm gonna put it in the oven at 200 degrees for an hour to let the paint harden. All done, fresh out the oven. It's been in there for an hour and we've had a really good result with that. Next job on this is just to get the little gasket around the top there, which is coming down in the post, should be here in the next couple of days, and then we'll get this back on the car. Okay, let's take the oil cooler off and check it over. So we've got the oil filter in here, and then we've got the two pipes here for the water. The bottom pipe from the oil cooler goes into the top pipe of the heater matrix, just so we know where we are there. So let's take off the oil filter and disconnect the pipes and then remove this piece. So 
So I'm having a look at this and it doesn't seem there's going to be anything really to gain by taking it off. So I had a look for the gasket because we've got the cooler here and then behind it there's a rubber gasket that mounts it onto the block and basically I can't seem to find one of those. The only one I can find is for a Mark 1 RS and they're nearly 30 quid and I'm still not sure whether it'll be the right size. So I think the RS uses a very similar cooler style to this. So I'm just wondering really whether to actually do this. My sort of you know, idea at the moment is to basically leave it on, just clean it up and leave it where it is because although it is, there is oil spattered around everywhere, it's not actually coming from the gasket at the back. So I'm fairly sure that is okay. And what I don't want to do is take all this off and uh, not be able to get another cooler and also not be able to get a gasket as well. So best policy at the moment, I think, is going to be not to disturb it, put the um, filter back on and basically wait till we rebuild the whole engine until we start to mess with this. But at the moment, I'm going to leave the oil filter off because it gives me great access up there to start on doing bits of the alternator. So let's move on and get the alternator removed. Okay, alternator, not particularly complicated to get this out, but very fiddly. So we need to undo some of the brackets here, move this thing out the way here, and then we basically undo it, undo the wires from the back, and we want to pull it up pulley first, it should come out of that hole there, so uh, yeah, let's get started. So undo these two nuts from the canister purge valve and move it out of the way. Disconnect the plug. And just put the two screws back in so we don't lose them. So now we've got to disconnect the multi-plug. We need to undo this bolt here, take this bracket off, and then take out this earth, and also bend this bracket down just so we can get the alternator past that. Okay, I'm going to try not to bend that down first and then if I can't get the alternator out, I'm going to bend that down. But it looks like it hasn't been done before, so maybe that's the original alternator. <laughs> Probably is, I don't know. Okay, and on the side of the alternator, we got the red wire coming into it and it has this plastic cap on it. So we just pulled it off and then we'll undo that nut there and that will remove the wire. And then we've got to take out this multi-plug at the top. To be careful with these, I broke off a little piece of the other connector in there so that little wipe in there, I can get that out. This is okay because this alternator is going to be changed so I'll get a new piece anyway, but if you are reusing your alternator, just make sure that this is firmly pressed in before you start to uh, pry that off. Undo the mounting bolt nearest to the engine. And pull the bolt right out. Okay, and then the second bolt is down the back here. So with this bolt, you won't be able to get it all the way out, but you just need to get it out enough so that it touches the inner wing, and that will be enough to get the alternator out of the bracket. Okay, just pull that out as far as it will go. <laughs> Mine actually just fell out because the engine's loose, but if the engine is stable, you probably won't be able to get the last one out. Then very delicately wiggle the alternator free. So this is a 20 year old car with 130 odd thousand miles. So I am going to use the crowbar very, very delicately just to move it from its um, bracket there. So I need to make sure that's resting on the engine mount. Just very, very delicately. Don't damage the plastic. Don't use any real force, but just try and sort of move it from its mount there. Okay, this is the fiddly bit. We have to get this out pulley facing up through this gap here so it might be slightly easier with this because the engine is actually loose but um, we'll see what happens it's really tight access so yeah it is hitting on that earth mount there so I may need to bend that yeah I'm going to bend the earth mount it's going to be fun trying to bend that back Okay, I'm going to unplug this connector as well. Do this one as well. Okay. It's like Ford's idea of a joke, I reckon. There'll be some old boy that used to work for Ford, retired somewhere, just laughing to himself watching this. God. You cannot be serious.
They even say in the book, oh yeah, be careful when you put the new one in because you don't want to break any components on the alternator. Now, how the bloody hell am I going to do that? Oh God, there we go. There we go. What a lot of titting around. Okay, there we go. One SG170 alternator, smart alternator, I believe. I reckon it's the original one. Might not be, but I reckon it is. Looks to be very old in there. Looks like it's got 130,000 miles with uh, 20 years on it. So um, yeah, that's the code on the back if anybody's looking for one and uh, this one is Motorcraft. Again, I'm not sure whether it's the original, probably is, but either way, I'm gonna have this one reconditioned or I'm gonna replace it. Right, I've changed my mind. I've decided to take the oil cooler off after all and check it. So it makes sense to do this while the car is this far taken apart because it may be a bit of a pain to do when it's all back together again. So the first thing I'll do, just pop the filter back on and then we'll clean around it and just make sure that no dirt's gonna get into it when we take it off. Undo the coolant hoses. Whoop, <laughs> mind the coolant. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Right, get the rag. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that seems to be a piece of the engine that doesn't drain. Right, okay, same with the other pipe. Take the filter back off. And then with a 27 mil deep socket, undo the middle nut. And take off the cooler. <laughs> There's no easy way to do this without getting covered in uh, antifreeze, so that's what we got there. And this is the gasket on the back that I wanted to check, so I'm just making sure that's okay. I have got one coming down for Focus RS, Mark 1 RS. Apparently they are either very similar or the same, so if it's the same, I'll change this one. Obviously, if it doesn't fit, this gasket looks in reasonable condition, so I'll leave it where it is. So this is what we got if anybody's looking for them. The little pickup here, this is the code on the side there. This all looks in nice condition. And then we've got the actual cooler itself. Just turn that over there. Have a look at the back of that. So that's the surface that goes onto the block. This is where the little gasket sits in there. And then we've got the make of it there. I reckon this is probably an original one, made in USA. Um, and then the code on the side here. I think the one for the RS has a different code. Let me see here, these are a little bit corroded. But the inside actually looks all right. I didn't have any problems with this at all. So what I'm gonna do is clean it up cosmetically, clean the ends of these up, and uh, see what that gasket is like when it turns up. If the gasket fits, I'll change it. If it doesn't fit, the one in there actually looks okay and we will reuse it. Flush the cooler through just to make sure it's clean. Looks good. I'm just going to flush out the heater matrix too while everything's disconnected. So I'm going to put a hose on here and then that will flush through the heater matrix inside and that will all come out of the hose underneath there. Flush it through so we need to catch the first lot of antifreeze that comes out because the heater matrix will still have some in and then we just let the clean water run through it. Let's give the chassis leg a go with engine degreaser. That looks better, it just tidies it up a little bit. The new alternator's turned up, let's see what we got. It's 
So here it is, Motorcraft Alternator. So this one has been reconditioned. I think it's somebody's old stock they've had somewhere and uh, managed to find this for £130 plus £5 postage. So it's identical to the other one. And um, I had a quick look online and from what it seems, Motorcraft is a supplier that sort of supplies um, bits for older Fords. And I think they are Ford approved or done by Ford or they're certainly the most kind of genuine parts you can get. So I believe from what I could see. And um, I just saw this one and I thought, yeah, OK, we'll, we'll go for the same one. If I just show you the box here, the details on it. So that's the label there. It's a genuine Motorcraft jobby, Ford marked. So yeah, I presume they do... Um, approve these alternators that's to tell me that it's been uh, or to tell me to give back the core I think if they want to recondition that I don't think this guy wants anything back on this because it's um, old stock and then this is the label there so we'll get this alternator on and hopefully it'll be running absolutely lovely <sighs> right you f let's get you back on Okay, let's turn it around, try it the other way. I'm going to try it with the connector facing towards the suspension strut. Okay. That's it. Right, so the way to do that is to have the sticky out terminal facing this way and it seems to go through it a lot better there before we sit that back in its cradle we're just going to put the furthest bolt away back in because when it's back in its position you won't be able to get this bolt in because it will hit the inner wing so just rest that in there and then we just turn the alternator around and put it in its cradle okay the alternator sat back on its mounting points there and I've got the bolts loosely in there I'm just going to sort of finalise that last bolt there, but I found this to be extremely awkward. It's taken me about an hour to do this, and I don't know whether it's the, either the way I'm doing it or the fit of the alternator or whatever, or just a, a technique to do it, but I found this extremely difficult. The problem is, it's such a tight fit over its two mounting points. What I tried first is I tried to put this back bolt in fully, because it sort of sits in a cradle and you haven't got to take it out. I tried to put it over that, then the front wouldn't go in. Then I tried the front, the back wasn't lined up. And I don't actually know how I managed to do that. You just have to keep trying and uh, what what will happen is you'll basically get it on and you'll think, oh, it's nearly there. And then you literally can't go any further. Then you have to get the crowbar and just very delicately take it off again and start again. And you'll have to keep doing that and eventually it will go on. And what I did try actually is um, very carefully, I put a little, little bit of um, GT85 spray on here just to help it go onto the brackets there. Obviously be careful not to get it in the alternator. I'll just show you underneath as well. This is what we've got from underneath. So this is the bracket and this is like a hollow u-shape there so i put the bolt all the way in through both the alternator um, points there and then i was trying to drop it down on top of that and then i had problems that the front wouldn't go in so it is very fiddly just keep at it and um, eventually it will go in there may be an easier way that i've overlooked but uh, as i said i found this really difficult torque the bolts to 45 newton meters And then we need to reconnect everything that we took off to get the old alternator out. So we need to bolt this back on, do the brackets again, bend this earth strap back, plug in the two connectors. So we've got the big red wire at the back and we've got the multi-plug there. Just basically redo everything. All the bits and pieces reconnected and that's that delightful job done. Got all the new goodies are turned up for the oil separator here. So we have the oil separator regulating valve. We've got the gasket for the back the grommet for the top here, and then the pipe that goes out of that with the regulator attached to it uh, connected to the car. This has had a coat of very high temperature lacquer off camera, and it's been in the oven for an hour, and it's got a really nice solid surface on there now, so ready to be built up, and we can put it back on the car. Let's get it back on the car. So we've got a lovely clean block, just check this surface is clean and also check this one's clean too. 
put the gasket on the back. This only lines up the holes one way, so you get it on the right way. Put the longer top bolt back in its position, and that will go through the gasket at the back. And then just fit this back into position. Just do the bolts up finger tight. And the shorter bolts at the bottom. These are 8mm bolts. I can't find any torque spec on these. Don't do them up too tight. Don't leave them too loose. You know the score. Let's do each one little by little. There we go, not too tight. And then reconnect the pipe at the top. And that's our oil separator completely refreshed. Okay, let's take the sump off. Drain the oil. So the oil in here was basically brand new. I've only done a few hundred miles on it. All nice and clean in there, no bits of plastic or metal or anything like that, so the sump should be fine. Take out all the 8mm bolts. Last one. And there we go. And that's stuck on there because the SG170 uses a sealant gasket. So we just gently pry that off. So there it is, the sump is off. Nice and clean inside there, as we expected. And if I just show you up here, what I wanted to check is there was nothing in the oil pickup there, so that's all nice and clean there. And uh, the gasket that I did last time, I did actually want to check and make sure that it was done properly and um, the right amount was on there and it hadn't sort of squidged out or blocked anything, so I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is scrape off the old gasket and then basically do the same again, put it back on, torque with the bolts to spec and that's one job done. Just going to use this to remove the old sealant. This was the trim removal tool from my black view, and uh, basically, I'm just going to use it because it's plastic and it won't damage the mating surfaces on the bottom of the engine there. Just going to run each sun bolt through here just to make sure that the threads are okay and that all traces of sealant have been removed. To get the sun back on, we need to use a three millimeter bead of sealant and run it around the inside of these bolt holes here. We need to clean up this surface as well. Once we've got the bead of sealant on this, we need to make sure that it goes onto the bottom of the engine the first time because we don't want the sealant sort of squishing over or getting in the bolt hole. So we need to cut some studs here. So these are six mil and we cut them 20 mil long and then we basically put them into the bottom of the engine and as we put the sump back on, these will go through here and give us a guide and then we put in the rest of the bolts, take the studs out and then put the final bolts in. And this is where they go. So we've got nine in so far. So if I just put the last one on here, just screw them in there. And then what we do, if we've got the sealant on the sump, we can just raise the sump very gently over these studs. And then we know it's in exactly the right place and we can raise it up to the block. And we know that the sealant first time has gone into the right place. And then what I would do is put the other bolts in. Once they're done up, we take these out, put the other bolts back in, and then we know the sump's gone on there properly. However, I am going to be leaving that off for now because I need to do a few more jobs in this car before I put that back on. What we're going to do here is change the oil gasket in the upper sump. So we need to separate these two pieces here and change the gasket in there. Also, I want to change the water pump, which is there, and the oil pump as well. It's recommended with the oil pump that you take the engine out really before you do it because it involves a lot of dismantling. However, because we are fairly well dismantled here, I am going to push ahead and do that. Also, we're going to be changing the cam belt as well. I'm going to clean this oil cooler up a bit so this one doesn't get exposed to loads of heat but the paint still has blistered a bit so what I'm going to do is just clean it up a bit, put a coat of primer on it and then we'll do a coat of satin black and then probably a bit of lacquer as well. This label here I'm going to try and save because it is an original label and we'll stick that back on afterwards. So with these pipes here they have got a little bit of corrosion on the end there. I'm going to clean these up just so we get a nice seal when we put the water pipes back on. See if we can get the label off.
Just put that somewhere safe and we'll stick this back on afterwards. I'm not going to do this bit inside here because that is right up against the block. What I'll do when I spray this, I'll just tape all this bit off so that all this side is covered. That's the sides cleaned up. Let's just clean up the water pipes. I'll just give this a quick spray with brake cleaner to get the dust off, then we'll tape it up and give it a coat of primer. Just tape over it, then cut around the edge with a knife. There's a little groove around there. This had three coats of satin black last night off camera. I'm going to give it a coat of high temperature lacquer now. Take the tape off. Now for the finishing touches, we'll get some glue, put this on the label and get this stuck back on. All done, we'll get this piece back on. Get the new cooler to block gasket on. This is the new one and this is the old one that I just took off there. Bit of oil on both sides. And then put it back into position. Screw the pipe back in. And just tighten it firmly with the 27mm deep socket. Not too tight, not too loose. Put the oil filter back on. Hand tight only, don't go crazy. Okay, the cam belt, the lower crankcase gasket, the oil pump and the water pump. So these are all sort of tied in together. So what we're gonna do is start to dismantle it and then do these jobs as we go. So if you're watching for one particular job, hopefully you'll be able to pick out what you need as we go through this. So first things first, let's take off the water pump. Under the three bolts. Under the four 8mm bolts. And then remove the water pump. That's a bit bloody fiddly, it must have been talking to the alternator. There we go. And that's what you're left with there, just the casing where the pump goes. Here it is, the water pump. This one is basically brand new. It's done very, very few miles. It was put on when I got the car, when I had the cam belt done by somebody else. I don't know the quality of it. I don't know where he got it from. I've had no issues with it, but I am gonna change it anyway for a nice known premium brand if I can find one. Same with the cam belt. It doesn't need doing, but because I wasn't the one that did it. I don't know what kit it was. I am going to change it anyway. It just makes sense to do it now. Under the four bolts to loosen off the plastic cover. Just move the plastic cover back slightly so we can get the cylinder head cover off. Don't pull it back too much because you will crack it. Somebody's already done this to my car there. Take out the HT leads, 
all different lengths, so nice and easy when we come to put them back again. Disconnect the wire from the variable valve timing solenoid. Undo the bolt. And then remove the solenoid. Then normally we take off the crankcase ventilation hose, but at the moment it ain't connected enough in, so that can stay where it is. And then we undo the 10 bolts here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And lift the cover off. This cover will be going to the powder coaters. I'm going to have it blasted and painted the same colour and uh, have this reconditioned. Obviously, when I'm filming, this cover will be off, but until this goes to the powder coaters at night or whenever I've finished, I'll have this back over the engine because I don't want to leave an engine open like that. I don't want to get anything in it. All these bolts need to come out too. We need to change the gaskets on them. Also, this gasket below, this is the one that always causes the problem, so it will leak whatever you do. The best bet with these is to get a genuine forward one, which is what I'm going to do, because uh, you'll have constant problems with these, and they leak into the spark plug holes and cause arcing, all sorts of hassle. It's always an issue, so the way we're going to go with this is a genuine forward gasket. Remove the crankshaft pulley. Take out the cover bolts. <laughs> the cover will fall off. Support the engine with the engine bar. Normally you do this from underneath, but with this car, the sump is loose and it's too high to get the jack under it. So I just got one of these instead. Careful not to drop the chain on the camshafts. <laughs> Hours of fun. Okay, E sharp. Remove the engine mount. I'm just going to move the power steering fluid reservoir out the way. 18 mil deep socket. Then take out the 15 mils on the chassis rail. Last one. Take the mount off. Okay, there we go. Remove the two Torx mounting studs, E11. Remove the upper cover. Unbolt the auxiliary drive belt idler pulley. Unscrew the four bolts. One, two, three, four. This one is a Torx bolt. We need to make sure that goes back in the same position. And the Torx. So these are different lengths, so make sure these go back in the right order and also make sure the Torx goes back in the right place. Make sure you drink your tea too before it goes cold. It's uh, freezing today. Very nice. Now we've got to set the engine to TDC on number one cylinder. 
remove the spark plugs. Then just put a bit of blue paper over these spark plug holes to stop anything from getting in there, you know, grit and bird shit, anything like that, all the stuff the cars like. Temporarily put the crankshaft pulley back on, just remember to line up the little keyway there. Rotate the crankshaft clockwise until the intake valves for number one cylinder have opened and just closed again. Open. And closed. The slots at the end of the camshaft now should be completely horizontal and level with the cylinder head surface. Take out the TDC blanking plug, 13 mil. Back the crankshaft off very, very slightly anti-clockwise. Screw in the timing pin. Then very delicately roll the engine clockwise and you will feel a definite point of contact where the crankshaft touches on that timing pin. Yeah, there we go. Okay, the engine is now set to TDC. So we've got the number one piston at the top of the cylinder. We've got the crankshaft locking pin in down there and we've got the bar in to lock the camshaft. So that's going in the groove nicely there. Take the cam belt off, slacken the timing belt tensioner bolt. And turn the tensioner clockwise using an Allen key. Unscrew the bolt. Then slide the timing belt off the sprockets. And don't forget to remove your crankshaft pulley and obviously make sure it's still locked in position. There we go, that's the new old cam belt. So as we're going to be doing some further work to this car, we're going to be taking off the lower crankcase and oil pump. I'm going to put this mounting back on just so the engine is secure while we do that. Got the engine now secured on its mount and we're just going to take the bar off. Okay, we're going to take out the crankshaft sprocket and the thrust washer and also, if you notice this, this is why I'm going to have to do this again. I actually used the wrong primer. Don't tell anyone, but we're going to have to do the front and the back again, but um, that's a job for another day. I'll probably do that off camera actually, but here we go. So take out the crankshaft sprocket, pull that out. This is obviously still set to TDC and then we take out the thrust washer. We need to remember which way this goes in. Remove the sump. We've only got a few bolts in here just while I was doing other things. Under the two oil pickup bolts with the T30 Torx. Going to take off the old gasket as well and replace this one when we put it back together. I'll just stick all the bits inside the sump there just to keep them safe and out of the way. Undo the bolts on the right hand drive shaft bracket. I have, uh, for the benefit of the tape, uh, already <laughs> pre loosened these, but they weren't too bad. I don't know whether you can just take this bit off actually, but I'm just going to take the whole bracket off. Why not? Let's make some work for myself. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, so that's a bracket loose. 
Should I take that off, what do you reckon? Okay, I'm gonna undo these two, take that off, and then take this bracket out as far as I can, actually. Okay, 13 mil deep socket. Yeah, I should have left that bracket done up, actually. Let's just pop one of these back in loosely, and then take these out. Okay, that's better. There we go. So now we can get all the bolts in there. And we're going to take off the cap bracket support as well because that looks like it's going to be in the way. Again, I have pre-loosened these. <laughs> Got 13 mil at the top. Taking off this bracket doesn't seem to be in the Hanes and I think this uh, is a sort of specific bracket to the SD170 so it will need to come off. Right, progressively unscrew the 10 bolts that secure the lower crankcase to the engine. Right, I'll make that nine. Where's number 10? Oh, it's in there, okay. There it is. Okay, number nine. Okay, what I'm going to do is put a couple of bolts back in here, either side, just to support it. Then we'll take out all these bolts on the side of the gearbox. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 13 mil. And then I think this is the last one, just above the drive shaft. Let's see. Okay, let's take out our two bolts that we just put in and see what happens. Okay, you can sort of leave it from that side, but don't put anything in between the mating surfaces because you'll knacker the joint. There we go, that's the lower crankcase off. Remove the gasket. And then we've got to clean up the mating surfaces where the gasket goes. And especially where the sealant meets the oil pump there, there's a little bit of sealant that will just squidge out there, so we need to make sure that's completely clean there. There's a little bit actually on there, so that needs to be cleaned off. Someone here as well that needs to be gotten rid of too. Going to take off the oil pump, but first I'm going to undo this pulley here because that seems to be in the way of one of the bolts. Let's pop the bolts back in so I know where they are. Let's undo the oil pump. These are 8 mils. Take out the pump. And then remove the oil seal.
the old one, the new one. Got the new gasket there for the centre as well. Prime the new pump. <laughs> Put a bit much there. <laughs> Yeah, what I've got to try and do is get these two little bits here. There's one on each side, well, two on each side. What I've got to try and do is line this internal piece up here so that these two bits here sit on that cut out of the crankshaft there. It's really difficult because it moves around, so it's just a case of um, keep trying it till it goes on. There we go. Ooh. Right, this is an old bullshit channel. That took me a bloody long time. That was probably the best part of three quarters of an hour fiddling around with that. And um, I'll just take off the tripod, I'll show you. Right, that's now setting where it needs to go. And there's a little piece there that just sits on the flat of the crankshaft on each side. And that's uh, obviously when the crankshaft turns, that'll turn the pump. And that was, um, it moves around and you have to kind of, um, line it up properly and what I did in the end obviously I have to be extremely careful not to damage this because the oil seal will sit there but I got this uh, Allen key and really 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 carefully I just put it in there and just lifted up the internal rotor there and uh, it did actually pop on there so that's what I'd probably do if I was doing that again yeah you've got to be really really careful not to cause any damage to that at all because um, you don't want any oil leaks there Okay, just do the bolts up loosely and then we get the oil pump into position here. So it needs to be between 0.3 and 0.8 mil lower than the surface here. As that'll be the same on both sides so we can get some feeler gauges and a straight edge and just make sure that's in the right position. Then we'll do the bolts up firmly. 0.3. Perfect. Check this side. Perfecto. Tighten the bolts, recheck the levels on both sides, and torque the bolts to 11 newton meters. Fit a new crankshaft oil seal, so a clean pair of gloves, tiny bit of oil, and just hand pressure only. There we go. Just going to refill our pulley that was in the way of the oil pump. Okay, here we go. Lower crankcase all cleaned up. So this has had a good scrub with gunk and uh, basically done it both sides, done the outsides, rinsed it off, dried it and then cleaned it properly with brake cleaning to make sure that every last drop of moisture is out of that. And then we've got the new gasket here ready to go on. And also I've cleaned up all of the bolts, made sure they're all okay. So now we're ready to put this back on the car. It's got the new gasket on here that's seated in there properly. These only go on one way, so uh, yeah, nice and easy to fit there. I'm gonna put two small lines of sealant between the block and the oil pump. So one there and one at the other side as well. And it doesn't actually say it in the book, but on the other side, this car did have some sealant actually on this little thing here. So just where that joins onto there, I'm gonna put a little bit down there and a small bit on the other side as well, just to be sure. Just raise this back into position and put the bolts back in. We'll just put them in loosely for now because we need to make sure this lines up with the block. Put the bolts back in. Let's do them loosely, make sure we've got the right sizes. Torque the bolts to 22 newton meters before the sealant dries.
and do the gearbox bolts back up. I'm not going to do this up too tight because I'm going to take out the gearbox seam when we do the clutch. Put the oil pickup strainer back on. We've got a new gasket on there too. And torque the bolts to 10 newton meters. To get the sump back on, we've got 10 M6 20 mil studs. We're going to put those into the bottom of the crankcase as a guide, put the sealant on, and then put the sump back on, do up the bolts, take out the studs, do up the rest of the bolts in stages as well. That's the position of them. They need to go exactly where these are so that the gasket squidges down properly. Put a three millimetre bead of sealant around the inside edge of the bolt holes. Put the sump over the studs. And put the bolts in. Take the studs out. Now we're going to put the rest of the bolts back in there, finger tight. Now we've got to do the bolts up in two stages. So stage one, you tighten them to six newton meters. Stage two, you tighten them down to 10 newton meters. And this is the sequence in which we need to tighten them so the gasket spreads out suitably. All right, stage one, six newton meters. I'm going to hold the book up here so I get the right order. Okay, that's the first stage. And now stage two, do them up to 10 newton meters. Okay, all done. Put the bits back on the crankshaft. And clean up and reassemble the drive shaft bracket. The exhaust bracket here is not going to go back on yet because I'm going to clean that up and give it maybe a coat of paint. And the bearing there seems nice and smooth as well. Intermediate shaft bearing, 25 newton meters. Going to get the brackets back on. Now the block is all painted, so this one sits up the top there. And the other one down here, the AC compressor bracket, sits below it. Compressor bracket, lower bolts, 25 newton meters. And the upper nuts, 48 newton meters. And the power steering bracket bolts, 48 newton meters. So there we go, hope you enjoyed. Sorry for the noise, the mics are broken. They don't like being dragged underneath the car and they seem to have conked out. So uh, you might get a bit of wind noise on there, but for the next episode, we're gonna get some new ones. Also, we need to do the cam belt. So that's gonna go back on. We need to get special tension in from Ford that's got like a stronger spring in. So the SD170 uses a uh, slightly different one. So we're gonna get one of those. And also we need to change the clutch and we're gonna rebuild all the coolant system, all the suspension. So all of that is coming up this summer. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you like these style of videos, feel free to like and subscribe. I don't know where this channel is going, but it's great to have you guys along from the ride. I'll see you for the next one.